Go or Golang is a very popular programming language created by Google in year 2007, which is used extensively by many big companies like Google, Twitter, Netflix, Meta, Uber, and so many others. Not just this, many popular DevOps tools like Docker, Kubernetes, Prometheus, Terraform, all of them are written in Go. Golang is also a preferred programming language for all cloud native and DevOps tasks. So why is Go language so damn popular? In this video, we will understand why companies are choosing Go programming language over Python, Node.js, Ruby, or any other language. Along with this, we will also look at different case studies on how Go language are used in these companies and what are advantages of using Go language and why you should learn Golang in 2023. Let's go. Hey everyone and welcome to Cloud Champ. Let's quickly have a look at history of Golang and why was there an actual need to create a new programming language. So Go programming language was created when Google was facing major problems with concurrency and scaling, but the main issue was compile time. It used to take a huge amount of time to compile applications written in C programming or Python. This is when three Google experts, Robert, Rob and Ken, decided to create a new programming language that should be easier to read and write, should be very fast and also handle concurrency. So this is how Go programming was born, a very simple language that you can easily read and write, can compile code faster than C and Python and can even handle concurrency easily. Now most of you might be confused about what concurrency is. So let me explain you this quickly before we move ahead. And concurrency is nothing but just an ability of a system to manage multiple tasks simultaneously. For example, you're watching this video on YouTube. So while you're watching, someone else is uploading a video, someone is writing a comment, someone is getting a recommendation. So YouTube is handling multiple tasks at the same time. And this is what concurrency is. And you can do concurrency easier in Go using Go routines. So if any time you want to build really big programs to analyze the whole freaking internet, Go would be the right choice for you. Now that we understand how important and useful Golang is, let's look at some interesting case studies to understand how big companies are using Go programming language in their systems. All right, so I'm here on go.dev slash solution slash case studies, which has case studies from different companies. And we have some big names here, Meta, Google, Microsoft, Netflix, PayPal, Salesforce, and other companies. Let's look at some interesting ones and how they are using Go in their architecture. We have Microsoft here. Let's see how Microsoft is using Golang. Uh, this is a blog from Microsoft website. With the static binary that you build in Go, you could have Dockerfile that's 10, 11, 12 megabytes instead of bringing in the entire Node.js ecosystem of Python on Java, where you have got these hundreds of megabyte size Docker files. So Microsoft is using Golang to reduce the size of their Docker images. Along with this, they also mentioned how performance has been increased when using Go. So performance of Go means that you're not really using anything when you are coming from other language. In fact, compared to Python or Ruby, you are gaining quite a bit of speed, which defines Go is faster than Python or Ruby. And this is why they have shifted in some of their applications. Now let's look at another case study where Netflix is using Golang. This is a medium blog by Netflix. Netflix is using Go to improve latency. If you go down here in this block and you look here, it says, the decision to use Go was deliberate because we needed something that had lower latency than Java and is more productivity for developers than C while also handling tens and thousands of client connections. So Go fits this space well. This is how Netflix has shifted from Java to Go. This is getting interesting. Let's see some more. PayPal is another great application to transfer money. And let's see how PayPal is using Go. So in here, you can see PayPal is using Go to scale, to increase scalability. If you see here, as PayPal's platform becomes more intricate, Go provides a way to readily simplify the complexity of creating and running softwares at scale. Language provides PayPal with great libraries and fast tools, plus concurrency, garbage relations, and type safety. So this is how PayPal is using to scale their applications. And after this success, they have started rewriting the NoSQL system also in Go. And they have started adapting Go language in most of their other systems. Another interesting case study is by Twitter and how Twitter is using Go to handle 5 billion sessions a day in real time. This is a block by Twitter or X. And if you scroll down, you see this is the challenge they were facing, which was event reception. Event reception, you can go and read about this blog. But if you see here, it says this service is written in Golang frontend by Amazon ELB and simply in queues every payload. So even Twitter is using Golang for event reception and to handle 5 billion sessions every day. Another interesting case studies that has more information is by stream and they define why we switched from Python to Go. 
So in this, you can see the different reasons and why they have shifted from Python to Go. The first one is performance, and they say Go is extremely fast. It is typically 40 times faster than Python. And they also have a link for a benchmark game that will define the speed, and you can go and try it out. So when using Python, they were facing performance issues. They, as you can see, they say Python is a great language, but it is, but its performance is pretty sluggish for use cases such as serialization, deserialization, ranking, and aggregation. So using Go, they were just getting the information in one milliseconds, whereas with Python, they were getting information in more than ten milliseconds. Apart from this, another reason to shift from Python to Go was concurrency and channels. Go is well known for concurrency. If you see, they say compared to Python, Java, running a function on a Go routine requires minimal boilerplate code. You simply pretend the function call with keyword Go. Another reason why they shifted to Go was faster compile time. As we already know, Go is very fast. And here they say our largest microservice was written in Go. It currently takes four seconds to compile. And Go's fast compile time was a major productivity when compared to languages like Java and C++, which are famous to sluggish compilation speed, which is obviously correct. Now these are some of the reasons on why Stream has shifted to Go. You can go and read about it. Another interesting case study would be from Uber. Uber uses Go a lot and also contributes to Go community. So let's have a look at how Uber is using GoLang. So I have two blogs here from Uber, and these two are defines how they are using Go. The first blog. Uber Engineering's highest query per second using Go. And if you scroll down here, earlier Uber was using Node.js, and now they have shifted Go, which is defined in this part here. So Node.js was real-time marketplace team's primary programming language at the time we evaluated the languages, and thus we had more in-house knowledge and experience with it. However, Go meets our needs for following reason: having high throughput and low latency requirements, for CPU-intensive workload, for non-disrupting background loading, and you can go read about it. On these blogs, I'll be posting the links for this in the description below. So, GoLang is used in Uber uh, for all these different reasons. Apart from this, there is another blog which has data race patterns in Go, and this defines how Uber is using Go to solve concurrency problem. They define how Go can be used for concurrency. For example, by scanning hundreds and thousands of microservices in senses running our data centers, we found that Go microservices expose eight x more concurrency compared to Java microservices. This is one of the reasons why they shifted from Java to Go. Apart from this, there are more reasons on why Uber has shifted from Java to Go. Uh, as you can see in this block, and the links for them, all of them are going to be in the description. Looking at all these different case studies and how companies are using GoLang, you might have an idea of how popular and in demand is GoLang, which should be the main reason of why you should start learning GoLang. But apart from this, if you are a GoLang developer, you can expect a very good salary. Even if you are not a developer, you are a DevOps on SRE, you still have to learn GoLang because GoLang is used for many DevOps tasks, including automation, creating scripts, configuration, and a lot more. So this brings us to the end of the video. I hope now you have an idea of why companies are switching from Python or Java to Go language. And this does not mean Python is going to die or Py this is the end of Python. Python is going to be still there and is used a lot in many big companies. So you don't have to worry if you are a Python developer. But I hope this video was informative. If you have any questions, any doubt, let me know in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day.